Atherosclerotic disease is associated with some sobering statistics. Someone in Canada dies from heart disease or stroke every seven minutes. That's 206 deaths every day. Heart disease is one of the leading causes of death in Canada, claiming more than 33,000 lives every year. Nine in every 10 Canadians has at least one risk factor for heart disease or stroke. Coronary revascularization procedures, such as percutaneous coronary intervention, or PCI, are a mainstay of the management of patients with coronary artery disease. They account for the highest volume of publicly funded cardiac procedures in Canada. PCI improves quality of life and reduces the risk of myocardial infarction and premature death. Antiplatelet therapy has become an important tool in the treatment and prevention of atherosclerotic events, particularly those associated with coronary artery disease. A large evidence base has evolved regarding the relationship between antiplatelet therapy prescription in various clinical contexts and risk-benefit relationships. After a percutaneous coronary intervention, or PCI, patients are usually followed up by both the interventional cardiologist and the primary care physician. Primary care physicians play a critical role in the routine follow-up of patients after a PCI, including ensuring the continuation of prescribed dual antiplatelet treatment after stent implantation. This makes it important for primary care physicians to understand the optimal duration of dual antiplatelet therapy post-PCI so that they can support their patient's continuation of therapy and maximize outcomes. The 2018 Antiplatelet Guideline is published in the March 2018 issue of the Canadian Journal of Cardiology and is an update to the 2010 and 2012 APT guidelines. This first algorithm outlines the key steps needed to decide on the optimal duration of dual antiplatelet therapy, or DAPT, in an individual ACS patient with STEMI or NSTEMI undergoing PCI. Let's take a closer look at each step in the algorithm. The recommended duration of DAPT after an acute coronary syndrome and PCI is 12 months based on studies showing that a full year of DAPT is associated with lower rates of myocardial infarction and stent thrombosis compared to shorter treatment durations. The combination of low-dose ASA with either ticagrelor or prosugrel is preferred over a combination of ASA with clopidogrel. DAPT beyond one year after PCI has been shown to confer additional benefit in patients who are not at increased risk of bleeding. Therefore, after one year of DAPT, a patient's potential risk of bleeding and thrombotic events should be examined in order to conduct a benefit risk assessment. Factors associated with an increased risk of bleeding include need for oral anticoagulation therapy, age greater than 75 years, frailty, anemia, chronic renal failure, body weight lower than 60 kilograms, bleeding requiring hospitalization in the past year, history of stroke or intracranial bleed, and regular use of NSAIDs or prednisone. Patients who do not present risk factors for bleeding should receive extended DAPT for up to three years after their PCI. The preferred DAPT regimen beyond one year consists of low-dose ASA combined with either ticagrelor 60 mg BID or clopidogrel 75 mg once daily. Although prosugrel 5 to 10 mg daily is also an option instead of ticagrelor or clopidogrel, it should be avoided in patients with a history of a prior stroke or TIA. This table lists some of the features that place a patient at higher risk of ischemic events. Clinical features include age greater than 65, prior MI, diabetes mellitus, chronic renal dysfunction. Angiographic features include multiple stents implanted, total stent length greater than 60 millimeters, complex bifurcation lesion, multivessel disease, chronic total occlusion intervention, or bioabsorbable vascular scaffold implantation. Patients with these risk factors may benefit even more from extended DAPT than patients without these high-risk features.
When making benefit risk assessments, keep in mind that these guidelines accord a greater emphasis and importance on the reduction of major ischemic events than on increased bleeding risk. Risk scores are available to help determine the duration of DAPT. Consult the CCS's e-guidelines website for more details on risk scores for DAPT duration. It's important to note that the recommendations for the duration of DAPT apply to the duration of P2Y12 inhibitor therapy. Most patients with coronary artery disease who are not taking concomitant oral anticoagulant therapy should continue taking ASA indefinitely. It's also important to recognize that routine patient monitoring is critical. Bleeding and ischemic risks should be assessed at least annually to determine whether or not a patient should continue on extended DAPT. For patients who have risk factors for bleeding or who have had a bleeding event on DAPT, step-down therapy after one year is recommended. Single antiplatelet therapy is warranted after one year post-PCI in patients at high risk of bleeding and should consist of either low-dose ASA 81 mg daily or clopidogrel 75 mg once daily. Now let's take a look at the algorithm for the recommended duration of DAPT in patients undergoing elective PCI in non-ACS settings, such as patients with stable ischemic heart disease. Let's take a closer look at each step in this algorithm. Patients who undergo elective PCI for a non-ACS indication, such as stable ischemic heart disease, and who are not at high risk of bleeding, should receive DAPT consisting of low-dose ASA combined with clopidogrel for at least six months, and in some cases, up to one year. This recommendation is based on clinical trials showing that three to six month courses of DAPT were associated with lower rates of bleeding than courses of 12 months with no difference in ischemic or thrombotic outcomes. Extending DAPT beyond 12 months might have benefit in certain patients who receive a drug eluding stent for non-ACS indications. Studies have consistently shown that extended DAPT with low-dose ASA plus clopidogrel for up to three years is associated with decreased MI and stent thrombosis, but increased risk of bleeding. In patients who do not present high-risk clinical and or angiographic features, step down to single antiplatelet therapy is a reasonable approach. This can consist of either low-dose ASA or clopidogrel, it's important to know the type of stent that was implanted in your patient. That's because patients who undergo elective PCI for a non-ACS indication and who are at high risk of bleeding should receive DAPT for a minimum of one month when a bare metal stent is used or a minimum of three months if a drug eluding stent is used. After this time, step down to single antiplatelet therapy with either low-dose ASA or clopidogrel is a reasonable approach. The CCS suggests that, in patients who are at high risk of bleeding, the duration of DAPT be shortened to a minimum of one month if a bare metal stent is used, or three months if a drug eluding stent is used. Like we saw with the recommendations for patients undergoing PCI in the setting of an acute coronary syndrome in patients undergoing elective PCI, a general principle to consider when deciding on the duration of DAPT is a balanced assessment of the risk of thrombotic CV events and bleeding. Patients at lower risk of thrombotic events and higher risk of bleeding can be considered for a shorter duration of DAPT whereas patients at higher risk of thrombotic events and lower risk of bleeding should be considered for longer duration of DAPT. Just like the ACS setting, patients who undergo PCI for a non-ACS indication might derive greater absolute benefit of extended DAPT if they have clinical or angiographic features associated with increased risk of thrombotic CV events. Let's recap. The duration of DAPT in patients undergoing PCI in the setting of ACS includes the following. Treat with dual antiplatelet therapy consisting of low-dose ASA with either ticagrelor or prosugrel for one year. At one year, assess the patient's risk of bleeding. 
Patients who do not have risk factors for bleeding may benefit from extended DAPT for up to three years with low-dose ASA and either low-dose ticagrelor or clopidogrel. Patients who are at high risk of bleeding should be stepped down to a single antiplatelet therapy. In patients undergoing PCI in the setting of non-ACS, indications such as stable ischemic heart disease include the following. Assess the patient's risk of bleeding. Patients who do not have risk factors for bleeding should receive dual antiplatelet therapy consisting of low-dose ASA plus clopidogrel for six months. After six months, assess the patient's risk of thrombotic events. If the patient has clinical or angiographic features of high-risk thrombotic events, they might benefit from extended DAPT for up to three years. If the patient does not have high-risk features of thrombotic risk, it is appropriate to step down to single antiplatelet therapy. Patients who are at high risk of bleeding should receive DAPT for a minimum of one to three months, depending on the type of stent implanted, followed by step down to single antiplatelet therapy. The full antiplatelet therapy guidelines cover many more topics beyond the duration of DAPT post-PCI, including those listed here and many more. For more information on the duration of dual antiplatelet therapy and other topics related to antiplatelet therapy, visit the CCS's eGuidelines website. The eGuidelines site allows users to quickly browse, search, and filter the CCS's most sought after guidelines. Thank you to the many volunteer experts who have contributed countless hours to antiplatelet therapy guideline development and dissemination.